Welcome to Empowered to Grow, the podcast. I am your host, Hanan al Basha, the business doctor. Following our conversations with empowered women who woke up one day and consciously claimed, I am more than enough, I am worthy, I am empowered to grow. And along their empowering journey towards realizing their own potential and their quest for growth, they became a beacon of hope and guidance for others. May you also find your inner power to grow. Hello again, everyone, and welcome to our uncharted discussions of Empowered to Grow. I'm still with the amazing, uh, I I want to say empowers because you're an empowers in every way that and and all your work. Michelle Molitor, thank you so much for staying around with me. Oh, thank you so much for having me. I like that empower us. Mm. Yep. I'll try that on it, but that, but my, my other title is the mind detective. So that's a good one too. Okay. So mind detective, founder and CEO of Nectar Consulting, hypnotherapist, uh, proprietary for brain really very traumatic events in your life where you created beliefs, decision points about yourself that then dropped into your subconscious and stayed there and became part of the, the program that just runs your, your hard drive, if you will. And until you wake up one day and go, I don't think that really works for me anymore, but I don't know how to change it. And I don't know how to get at it. I I refer to it as the unscratchable itch. It's like that. I I got, there's something wrong and I know there's something wrong, but I don't know where to locate it or how to change it. And so that's where I come in. So Um, In a typical hypnotherapy session, which is a combination of hypnosis, of neuro-linguistic programming or NLP, of cognitive behavioral therapy principles, um, and coaching all rolled up into one. That's what makes it so transformative in such a short period of time, because I, I, my hypnotherapy sessions are typically about two hours. I do it all over Zoom, right? So I can work with people all over the world. No one should be driving after hypnosis anyway, because you're still kind of a little, a little wobbly. But um, essentially, I, I I take you into that very relaxed state using my voice and a certain cadence and a certain tone, and it's very very relaxing. And in that place, then we just have a conversation, and we identify what are the events that are at the root cause that created the beliefs. I'm not enough. I'm not worthy. I'm not lovable. I can't be successful. Money's not for me, whatever it might be. That's creating these various barriers in your life. And then we also have a conversation with a person who hurt you, who instilled those beliefs knowingly or unknowingly. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, And and create healing at a very deep heart level, right? Um, And then from all of the information that I've taken in from our call and the conversations we've had, um, I weave all of that into the the last 30 minutes or so of our session, um, I call it the transformation. And so I'm instilling, I'm implanting seeds into your subconscious, are enough, you're beautiful, you're worthy, you're deserving, you're empowering, whatever that client needs that's specific to them. And then I take that, I mix it with binaural beat music, which is at a particular um, frequency and megahertz that drops you into that alpha brainwave state. And you listen to it every night as you drift off to sleep because your brain loves repetition. That's how we learn, right? So if you hear a song in the radio over and over and over and over again, you remember the words from 30 years ago. I literally, I cooked myself a hot dog the other day and I started singing the Armour Hot Dog song from when I was five (laughs) because it got dropped into my long-term memory. So that's essentially what I'm doing with my recording that I create for you is that then you listen to it every night as you're drifting off to sleep. If you fall asleep, that's fine. Your brain's always listening. It's always on high, you know, always on alert. And so it's just taking in that messages. And with that repetition, you're building new neural pathways in the brain, strengthening them. And the old pathways of I'm not enough, I'm not worthy. They start to weaken and the synaptic connections start to come apart. Mm -hmm. So it's like, 
It's like you've been driving down a, a very bumpy road full of potholes and you keep yeah. falling in potholes and keep getting stuck. And so I come along and I pave over all those potholes and we make it smooth sailing for you so that within a very short period of time, 30 to 90 days, typically, um, you, you find a new perspective for yourself. You sit up a little taller, you walk a little stronger and more confidently in the, the challenges that you're dealing with. And it, it increases your health, your well-being, um, and gives you more strength to do your good work in the world. So the difference between that and what people have heard of as stage hypnotherapy or not hypnotherapy, mm -hmm. stage hypnosis, yeah. which is more gimmicky and, yeah. and it's, and it's done and people use it to quit smoking or to make people cluck like a chicken. I've never <laughs> seen a stage hypnosis show, not once. And I don't really need to, but um, it's just, a, it's, it's for entertainment purposes mm -hmm. versus therapeutic purposes. Yes. Um, and, you know, I've, I've been a hypnotherapist for five years now. I'm, I'm certified in multiple modalities, just like mm -hmm. I'm certified in multiple ways as a coach. Yes. Um, and so in my work, I'm combining coaching and hypnotherapy and somatic therapy and um, heart healing and and energetics and physics and epigenetics, all these different sciences that have come together into this woven mix that I, that I share with clients in a way that helps them find the answers that they're seeking that are right here within us. And then they're able to choose differently because when you see the decisions you created when you were five or 10 or 15 or 20, whatever it might be mm -hmm. through your older adult eyes, yes. right? It might've been something that happened five years ago, right? Yep. Not necessarily yep. that long ago, but when you see yourself through a different set of lenses, you can understand what led you to create that decision about yourself mm -hmm. and then choose differently. So from this point, oh, okay, I'm not in that place that I was when I was five or 10. I'm yeah. safe. Mm -hmm. And, and I know that I'm enough. And even if some part of you doesn't quite believe it, lie to your brain, right? Yes. I am enough. 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 And the more you rinse, repeat that to yourself, the more those neural pathways are formed until you wake up one day and you're like, well, of course I'm enough. Why didn't <laughs> I ever think that I wasn't? And it's like a, a switch gets flipped and you're like, what was that thing that I was so worried about? I don't remember anymore. And it literally just disappears itself. Yep. Yep. And I, I've, I've personally experienced this. I, I haven't done hypnotherapy, but I, the, the changing of the, of the uh, neural ways in, in our brain and the synapses and everything um, uh, listening and, and doing the work of Dr. Joe Dispenza, Dr. Bruce Lipton, uh, Tony Robbins and, and everything, just understanding the voices in my head and my own limiting beliefs. And I remember one of them that just suddenly just came out to me. I'm like, oh my God, it's been there all my life. It's who do you think you are? And, and mm. that was always triggered every time I put a huge vision for myself. So I, I get so excited about the vision. I get excited on doing the prep work. And then that voice is triggered and I find myself kind of um, putting on the side everything I've done. Squirrel. And, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm crawling back to, to a kind Look of- Look over a, there. I could go do the laundry right now. Wouldn't that be a better idea, right? <laughs> exactly. Because I realized I got intimidated by my own vision that the voice in my head made me believe it was audacious. How, who are you to, you know, believe that? Who are you to think that? Who do, who do you think you are to be able to go out to the world and achieve whatever I have put on mine? And, and that for me was so eye-opening. Of course, it got me in tears for forever. But then I started processing through it, understanding and, and somehow going back and relating it to some, I'm sure you know, with hypnotherapy, I'll unlock more, but to some of the situations that we were talking about imprints, to some of the situations that had imprinted on me, that this is way beyond me, that, you know, who do yeah. I think I am to be able to go out and do this? 
And the more I spoke about this and the more I had these conversations with even other women and men, but women specifically, I found that we get conditioned um, a lot more than men with the you can't, you won't, you shouldn't. And that becomes our inner dialogue. You know, yes. that, that I the other day I had this aha uh, moment. I was like, oh my God, I'm the one saying no to me. Like I got so conditioned with, with getting told no for whatever reason and to whatever aspiration that I had that it became part of my programming. So I had this opportunity and, and the immediate thing was like, no, uh, no, this is too big. No, this is, you know, there are other people, there are other things. And I'm like, oh my God, I, I'm the one now saying no to me rather than yeah. waiting for someone else to do it. Yeah, no, and that's very, very common. It's very, very common. Um, we get that programming from our family of origin, from, you know, it might've been your parents, your siblings, a teacher, a coach, yep. uh, any other uh, adult figure in a, an influential place in your life, grandparents that can be like, and it might've just been one comment that they yep. said, but it, it sticks and hands on your heart and you take it in as the truth of who you are. Oh, I'm not worthy. I'm capable. I'm not smart enough. I'm not big enough. I'm not whatever, 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 fill in the blank. And, and then you move through life that way until something happens and you go, wait a minute. I don't know that I believe that maybe that isn't true. <gasps> what if it's not true? What if I am enough? What if I am worthy? What if I do have an empowering message that the world needs to hear that can only come from my voice, my unique perspective, yeah. right? And there's no other version of you out there, right? Yeah. And so that is that, that catalytic moment where the blinders start to come off and you're like, oh, there's a bigger version of me that's yeah. available here. And that's the edge of your comfort zone. I get chills talking about this too. <laughs> um, true story. I was working on a project, right? I was working on a presentation for something and the, the top of my head started to tingle and itch. And I was like getting all squirmy in my chair. <laughs> and I had this giant urge to get up and go have a snack. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I caught myself. I was like, wait a minute, wait a minute. That's, Oh, that's the edge of my comfort zone. Oh, <laughs> it's uncomfortable. The edge of the cool okay. <laughs> I think I'll just sit here. Uncomfortable happens. Keep going. You can have a snack later. The laundry can wait. <laughs> right? And, and so now I swear to you, my head tingles when it's, I get that, I hit that wall. I'm like you've got a okay. physical manifestation of the, for the comfort zone limits. Yeah. <laughs> Keep going sit in it and keep going. You won't die because there's the part of your brain, your amygdala, which is your fight or freeze mechanism. Mm -hmm. I like to call her Amy. Amy's your yeah. amygdala. She loves you. She just wants to keep you safe, alive and on the planet. Yeah. Um, Amy is the one that's got that, her guard up and protecting you from those beliefs that you put into place. They're mm -hmm. all neatly cataloged in her notebook. She's like, nope, it says right here, we can't do that. You no. <laughs> No. Yeah. Right. And, and so when those voices come, thank you for sharing, Amy, I've got this and keep going and that you're not being chased by a saber tooth tiger. Yeah. You know, it might just be a mean boss or a crazy coworker or, you know, a family member that's got that, that thing triggered in you yeah. and you recognize it and breathe through it and let your body know, nope get really present, right? Feel your fingers and your toes, feel your butt in the seat and go, am I okay? Yeah. Yeah. I am. Okay. There's nothing wrong here. I'm not going to die. I just need to keep moving forward. Yeah. And that is one of the simplest, most empowering things that you can do to help fuel you moving forward and giving yourself a little pep talk, right? I've got this, I've got this, I've got this, I've got yeah. this. I mean, even as I've been creating my course, which mm -hmm. started a year ago, right? Yeah. I'm like, oh, I want to create a course on imposter syndrome because it's got my name written all over it. <laughs> I had a massive case of imposter syndrome from my corporate days. And, and you know, I got it all mapped out and then, 
I got all stuck. <laughs> and so I was like, oh, okay, let me, go, let me go do some work on that. And I did. And then I brought in support team to help me. Um, and with their help and outside perspectives, um, it's, it's come to life. Yeah. And it's like, oh, wow, look at that. Right. And so it's just, it's amazing when you move past those self-imposed barriers mm -hmm. and allow yourself to dream the big dreams and to create those hairy, big, hairy, audacious goals for yourself. Yeah. Because yeah. once you do that, your own reality then becomes expanded. And then, then there's a whole new level of expansion that's possible for you. That's true. It's really fun to watch. And, and I love that because um, I'll share a bit of the experience other than, of course, the imposter syndrome and, and all. I think part of me, I used to joke about it saying, I'm going to make sure that I have every initial after my name, every abbreviation, because again, imposter syndrome. <laughs> um, and my friend- I got you, girl. I'll see your letters and raise you a few. Exactly. <laughs> My friend was recently he was joking about it. he's like I think you're missing a, the letter Z can you get the letter Z after your name at a point in time I'm like I'll look for a certification that kind of qualifies for that but um so this was one part of course the the, the career part the professional part um the other part which I actually had um, realized and I only realized it really recently was the fact that uh part of my limiting belief was my dad bless him but he's, he's a joker. He likes to joke a lot and stuff and make fun of things. And he used to joke about my, any kind of athletic, um, not ability, effort of mine <laughs> growing up. So, you know, he'd come to the sports day in school and he would be kind of cheering me in a, in a comic way as I'm doing the relay. Or I'll tell him, daddy, I'm on the volleyball team. He's like, seriously? So where's your position under the net? I'm not that tall, obviously. Um, or, you know, I went horse riding and, oh, so that would be the first uh, horse with the uh, back problems in, in Egypt or whatever it is. And, you know, I'd laugh about it. But of course, that shaped me or that, that translated into I am not athletic in my brain. And thus, for years, I would pick up something, tennis or, you know, swimming or whatever it is, and, and I'd quit just before that, that the level of, okay, this is becoming serious. And uh, a few years ago, as I walked out of uh, kind of a few businesses I co-founded and I wanted to take care of my health and, and everything, I discovered CrossFit and kickboxing. And I loved it. I, it was so challenging for me, but I loved the challenge. And within six to seven months, I could do a handstand, something I had never done since like, you know, um, being young in school. And uh, I was lifting like, you know, heavy weights. I, I was kick, kickboxing literally and stuff. And in my brain, people were like commending my efforts because I went from couch potato over uh, like burnt out uh, business person to, oh my God, this is so amazing. I'm doing this five to six times a week. And that got me triggered. That got me triggered to, I'm not athletic. What am I doing? You know, what, what am I trying to achieve? I'm, I, there's nowhere I can go beyond this point. And amazingly, and that's the part where it, it resonates a lot with everything you've been saying is, I started getting injured. I started getting injured mm -hmm. big time. Even yeah. though, you know, we had the coaches and was careful and everything. I started, you know, getting injured with my, my shoulder or my knees that I could barely even squat or whatever it is. And of course I stopped because I was just in so much pain and that remained with me that what was I trying to do? You know, I'm not, I'm not that type. Or I got the, the occasional comment from a family member. I was like, oh, seriously, you who know? are you? It's all another exactly. version of who are you? Exactly. Yeah. Who do you think you are? Do you think you're athletic? You think you're strong? You think you're fast, whatever it is. And um, when recently I, I realized that, that I had that voice, I had that limiting belief that it became a physical limiting belief. Um, I, I'm working now really hard to rewire that, to kind of change the narrative about it that, okay, I'm, maybe I'm not the go out and, and compete and become a you know, professional athlete, but that doesn't mean that this body, this vessel cannot be athletic and healthy and fit. 
course, because of course. I want that for the rest of my life. Um, yeah. And, so the and, simple- and, and yeah, I mean, that's such a perfect example because it, again, it's Amy, right? Your amygdala yep. is just trying to keep you safe. And so, oh, let me manifest it as a physical thing. That'll slow you down. That'll throw a few bumps in your road, yep. right? Um, so many ailments and diseases are, are physical manifestations of emotions that just haven't been processed fully. Um, whether that's IBS or chronic migraines or adrenal fatigue, um, psoriasis, arthritis, um, physical injuries, like what you suffered so many different variations on that theme. And, and so when you can recognize it as such, like, oh, okay, let me, let me rewire my thinking. Here's a great example. I worked with a young woman who suffered from IBS for 15 years and, and talking to her and she, you know, it created anxiety, it created depression. She was afraid to go out too far. Don't want to be away from home. Don't know when it's going to get triggered. Um, and, and in our, our conversation and talking, um, I said, so when did this begin? She says, well, when I was in high school, I was, I was uh, on the basketball team and my dad was the coach. And even oh. though I was one of the top players, we'd come home and we'd, we'd be driving home from a game and he would still berate me because I didn't do this, that, or the other thing. And he'd literally say to her, oh, you're shit, you're crap. I can't believe you did this, this, and this. And it physically manifested as IBS in her body that she withstood for 15 years. And once we identified this, it it's stopped. Yeah. yeah. I, I have, Our minds uh, are so powerful. Heard gastroesophageal reflux disease. And that triggers every time something major is happening, especially work-related. Mm-hmm. And I had, like, I've, I've had kind of reflux issues, digestion issues growing up. But again, it was always that. And I hadn't realized until very recently, again, after being on medication for so many years, that it's, it's a psychological trigger. It's something yeah. that just gets triggered from, from that perspective. So that's the amazing part is, Again, going back to getting in tuned with our body, understanding that we got imprinted on across our life and and recognizing these imprints. And as you said, do the rewiring work to be able to just kind of get it, get get the imprint off us. Move it out of the way. I mean, people, when I tell people the story, I mean, I have so many stories of clients eliminated or significantly reduced ailments that they've been suffering from sometimes for decades. They're like, what? And I'm like, yeah. And, and it's just a matter of taking your power back from your fears. Mm-hmm. Right. I mean, we could do some wonders on you, Hana. Let me, <laughs> we can get that stuff out of your we'll way. A, a conversation, <laughs> you know, because then it's like, wow, what's possible if that's not limiting you? What's possible if you move these perceived barriers out of your way or these unconscious barriers out of your way and you're able just to continue to do what you want to do, what you want to do, what you want to do, whether that's, you know, kickboxing and and being in the best shape of your life or building a new business or, um, you know, starting a family or whatever, whatever, right? Everybody's different. Um, So it's, it's just... It's amazing what our minds can do and how little we actually realize how powerful it is. I remembered one last thing that I will add to to that story is I remembered the, I think the final trigger that got my body into the, 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 the deterioration phase is I met a childhood friend of mine and I was, uh, we were at a conference and stuff and I was still getting up earlier to do my workout before the conference. And his comment was, huh, you, what, where, the, you know, what workout you've always been chubby. That's always been you. And I was like, that, that, you know, kind of something <laughs> did a deep dive into your subconscious. And then I got injured the same day. And then the injuries uh, kept going on because it was like, yeah, what, what am I doing? You know, that's, yeah. this is my shape. Wow. You this fell right into I, that pothole. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> big exactly. deep rabbit hole <laughs> all the way down to the bottom. And I, and I totally get it. I've had those same, uh, same kind of experiences in different ways in my life. And it just, it throws you back and you're suddenly that you're that little kid again. And you're like, yep. right. And, and you're like, wait, no, no, I'm not. I'm still the adult that I am now. Let me come back to myself and find my way through it and, and keep moving forward. Yeah. Well, thank you for giving the people, giving us the chance to remove the alternate versions of ourselves out of the way <laughs> that are blocking our way. Because I think um, another thing for me personally, it was like, I, I, I quit blaming. I quit putting, you know, kind of the responsibility on anyone else. Now I know, now it's my responsibility to take care of me. And thus it's other versions of me that need to get out of the way for me to, to keep going and to continue. So thank you for your work. I love that you've um, done this uh, unique collage of coaching and a bit of therapy and hypnotherapy um, to allow people to identify uh, imposter syndrome and limiting beliefs and, and know literally how to work it out and how to get out of their own ways. Yes, thank you. It's my joy to help people rewire their brains, release their fears and reclaim their confidence. I love that. Well, I wish for all of you to be able to do just that, to be able to address the blocks in your way, the junk in the trunk that needs to get out of the way and for you to live the best version of yourself possible and the best version of your life that you envision for you. Thank you for joining us. As always, wish you love, abundance, and prosperity, and we'll see you next time. Bye for now. Thank you for listening to the Empower to Grow podcast. For further engagement with a tribe of empowered women, join my Facebook group, Empower to Grow, or visit my website, www.hananelbasha.com. I'll catch you on the next episode. And until then, know that empowered you empowers others. Love, abundance and prosperity to you all.